But yeah, guys, this is what we do on our days off. Let's go boating. When work is slow, trucking is slow. But gotta have fun. Gotta enjoy life, too. Life, I guess, is not always about making money. But if anybody's seen this boat, this is an auction boat. Originally came from Copart. Was completely, was completely trashed. I mean, the whole interior, engine, everything had to be rebuilt. So, pretty much a brand new boat now. But yeah, there it is. Fully redid all interiors. All completely new interior. New carpet. New dash panels. Everything's been completely redone. Got a new, even new captain seat. The bow area has all new seating. Got a little table that goes right here. And the engine had to be rebuilt. So guys, if you guys ever get from auction. Yeah guys, it's just one of those things you never know what happens when you get from auction. That the engine needed to be rebuilt as well. So yeah guys, let's head out. We're gonna go uh, visit the Peterbilt and our trucks. See what's going on today. Our unit 389. This is my father-in-law drives on. All cleaned up. Got the bugs all washed off, stainless steel steps. Uh, these tanks right here, this is a wrap. That's a stainless steel wrap, so you don't have to polish it. All you do is polish the sides. Got the train horn mounted, tucked away in there. Eight inch stacks. Still gotta get some side chops, would look a lot better. Got these three lights, perfect. This is what I want on my W9, but the W9 has that elbow right there, which just kind of sucks in the way. Still gotta polish the fuel tanks. Underneath, we got the hidden lights, Hodge build fenders, the low rider ones, and check out the rear. I had this on my T660, this panel. I gave it back to my father-in-law and he installed Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine lights, which looks pretty good. Because it matches those right there. This light bar. This is the this is the six inch. They have the eight inch and they even have a ten inch. This is the minimum, the six inch one they, they have. And it's simple. All it does is mount on this like a T bracket in the back right here. And we deep three right here to match the ones on the sleeper that we drilled out just like that these are a little bit different style they got the white inside but they all still light up red that's a stainless steel chrome bezel in the rear window and a deck plate so little by little guys lots of little details by Looks like a whole nother truck from when we just got it. The wheels actually polished out pretty good without sanding. Still a little bit of scuffs in there. And check this out. Got the air ride. That's all the way up. And got the bumper flip. Ah, put it down. This is exactly what you need on a low rider truck. I love the bumper because you got this miter end and then you got this piece right here. This was like a seven month wait on this bumper. And if anybody wants a sleeper, we got a 48 inch sleeper that would sell. All it needs is uh, I have the uh, fender extenders right here. So all you would need is these hooks right here to finish it off. But the interior. It's got a full interior, everything. If anybody wants it, we'll let it go. Five grand and it's yours. Or send uh, send us your offer, what you would pay for the sleeper. It's a 48 inch flat top. Let's hope he doesn't scrape. Oh, that was close.
to park our truck back over here. And guess what happened? So all we did was leave this pickup truck overnight. One night. And somebody cut the cat off. Man. This happened to my uh, Silverado I had. 2015. Also cut it off right here. I parked it right instead of my semi right here. And they did in broad daylight. It was like 7, 8 a.m. I left it only like around 6 a.m. And they cut it off. They just don't care. They just want the cats around here. Yeah, guys i'm on a summer break right now from working on this truck because i spent a whole month doing the engine swap and all that so come maybe i don't know end of august september we're going to be back to uh fixing up this truck you know prepping it for paint and stuff fixing up the sunroof because guys the sunroof the last owner did a horrible job ends up this truck never came with the sunroof and they installed it wrong they installed it four inches back so i can't bolt any of the trims inside I have to remove the sunroof, cut out additional of the cab roof, and move it up about three, four inches. So it's gonna be a mess, it's gonna suck. But yeah guys, this truck is gonna get more progress soon. We got our air up. This is to air up our front suspension. We got the steer axle, starts rising. It's a very slow gauge, I hate this gauge. I wanna get a digital one. Because even though I pumped it up to about 35 right now, the gauge is still climbing. But yeah guys, let's head out. containers like that uh, for today and tomorrow they pay guys 525 a piece which is pretty darn good they're small containers the 20 footers and they are loading pretty quick over here in Tacoma so it should be a pretty decent week because guys we've been checking the load boards man for flatbed and dry vans like DAT and truck stop load boards it's just dirt cheap not to mention there's barely any loads for flatbed and dry vans and if there is, brokers just want guys to basically haul for free. It's ridiculous what's going on with the trucking industry, but hopefully it, imp it improves. We're re really hoping it improves. And we still have that 48 foot uh, flatbed for sale that my father-in-law has. Still for sale, guys. We'll give you guys a deal. We could negotiate, of course. So if anybody you know, has good accounts, good runs, and wants a flatbed, uh, we'll let it go. Everybody asks me, hey, uh, to get into containers, what do you need to do? Well, one of the first things before you get into the port is you need one of these Twig cards. This card is about 150 bucks and it lasts five years. And if you guys are getting close to getting into the ports, I would get it as soon as possible because it takes about two months to, for you to get the card because they got to do background checks, you know, fingerprint checks and all that stuff. Make sure you're not a criminal. So yeah, guys, that's one of the very first steps to get into the port. Inside, guys, it's very simple. You roll up, you talk with them, you give them the container you want, and they just give you a location on where to go inside. Very simple, guys, the ports. Nothing much to it. You roll up to your location. It usually goes A, B, C, D. And, and here we are. We rolled up to our location. My container's actually right here. And all you do is just stand at your location, and the packer will notice you and come and load you up. And very easy. See, I'm on C400, and it goes A is usually always the water side. So the water side will always start at A. So A, B, C, which I'm at C, and it goes 400 and up. Usually it goes from 100, 200 row, 300 row, and I'm on the 400 row. And basically, you just go to your location and just find your container and wait there. That's it. Very simple, guys. Nothing much to it. There you go guys, got our 20 footer, 
ready to go get it unloaded real quick right now. And guys, I got to the port at 1.15. I'm out at 1.30 now. That's 15 minutes to pull it out. I mean, it's not always like that, but we got lots of good days like that. But usually if one port like this is fully empty, another one is fully packed. So don't always expect empty ports if you come and do containers. Probably I brought them over here the past few weeks. But here we are. We got about 50,000 pounds worth of uh, quartz slabs over here. Well, guys, that's it for this week. I'll get some more better content for you guys whenever I'm done with my summer break from working on this truck. But yeah, definitely needs uh, some work done soon. 